We'll move on to the third Scandinavian country this morning, Denmark. And uh, I'm proud to introduce my colleague. We work together at the European Documentary Network office in Copenhagen. Maybe it's time to say briefly that European Documentary Network is, as, as it says, it's a European organization based in Copenhagen, but working in, in, in Europe and also outside of Europe on um, developing and improving the conditions for documentary filmmaking and for documentary filmmakers. And uh, since both Ova and I are here for two days, we'd be happy to talk to you during lunch and other breaks about what EDN is doing. But enough about that. Now we're going to another buzzword, Ove, crowdfunding. Absolutely, yeah. So as, as Mikael said, my name is Ove, and I work for EDN, European Documentary Network, and Mikael and me, together with our colleagues, are um, doing a lot of workshops and seminars, um, mainly in Europe, but also in the rest of the world. And um, I think one important thing for, for documentary filmmakers is, is really to unite and get together in, on occasions like this and to discuss and talk about the, the future of, of our industry and, and how we work. And I think that's actually very important that you do so. And I think actually we should start, um, before I talk anymore, to give a warm hand to Ludmilla and Victor for setting up this, this event today because it is really, really important. So thank you very much for doing that, Victor and Ludmilla. So I've been asked to talk a little bit about crowdfunding um, because, as Mikael said, that has been really one of the buzzwords in, in documentary filmmaking but I think also in, in other art forms. So um, what I will talk about today, uh, the, my notion of, of, crowd, of crowdfunding, sorry, and what I will talk about is also how crowdfunding looks from the point of view of EDN, because what I did was that I asked some of our members. At EDN we have around 1,000 members who are all active in the documentary industry. And I talked to them and I asked them, you know, what is, what is your experience with, with crowdfunding? So I'll come back to that uh, a little later on when we go through some of the case studies um, to see uh, how it works. So what I'll talk you through the next 20 minutes or so is uh, a little bit about what crowdfunding is. Then I'll show you different platforms and how they work, just to get a concrete example of, of different opportunities out there. And then I'll run you through a couple of case studies towards the end just to, to give you a couple of, of hands-on examples of how people have worked with it and how it has functioned for a couple of, of documentary filmmakers. So the first thing um, that is, I think is very important to, to uh, get a, to understand is that I know crowdfunding is a buzzword, and the first image you imagine to see around crowdfunding was not an old bearded man with a pipe, but actually crowdfunding is not something new. It's actually a very old phenomenon, and I think we all realize that. Going out and asking for donations, asking for money for your art, is not something new. And this Danish guy, who is Asger Jorn, to me one of the most important contemporary artists in Denmark, he actually did crowdfunding back in 1936. At that time, he was 22 years old, a little uh, younger than on the picture here. Um, and he was, 20, as I said, 22 years old, and he wanted to go to Paris to study paintings. And he, he had a master there that he wanted to go study with. And he was living in the far countryside of Denmark. And it was, you know, difficult for him, of course, in 36 to go to Paris. So he, he um, contacted a group of people around him and he asked them to buy a stock in his career. So he asked them to donate money so he could buy a motorbike and drive to Paris. Um, so he, stole, he sold stocks which were 40 Danish crowns apiece, which was a lot of money at that time. So if people couldn't afford to pay it all, they could pay rates. So he could kind of afford to go to Paris. So that was an example of crowdfunding, of course, happening in 36. And his way of approaching it was, of course, to going to the people that he already knew, the people that were physically close to him. So I think that kind of uh, exemplifies very good what crowdfunding really is, uh, because it is really 
uh, a project owner's effort to gather money from individuals to support an initiative. And I think that basic mechanism, the way that crowdfunding works, is still very much the same today as Asker Jorn did in 1936. Um, of course, what is changing today is uh, the method. Just like uh, we have seen the digital world revolutionize and change the way we make films, like Annika just talked about, it has, of course, also changed the way and the method in which we can make crowdfunding. Because now, of course, you can do crowdfunding online and you can use online platforms to it, and you can reach out and you can engage your audience in a very, very different way. So, crowdfunding today is centered, of course, around online campaigns, which are, of course, again, dealing with very, very concrete projects, very concrete timeframes, setting up specific goals and aims for your campaign. And uh, I think what you have to have in mind when you, when you do crowdfunding today with the online platforms is really also the model that Asker Jorn was using in 1936. Huh? So when people are successful with running crowdfunding campaigns, it's often because, it's almost always because they have very concrete projects that they ask money for or, f or funding for. They have a very concrete time frame that they work within. You know, I'm going to ask for, this, for money for this concrete project within the next 30 days. They set specific goals for how much money they want. And they have a specific aim. I want to reach this and that with my project. So these are very basic uh, mechanisms which are also uh, today, of course, essential and, and basic parts of a crowdfunding campaign. Now, what has changed are some of the elements of the campaign, the, the means to, to actually work with crowdfunding. Because in 36, Asker Jorn was walking from door to door, knocking his good friends and neighbors and people who he knew. And today, of course, the, the, you, you approach and you talk to people in a little bit a different way. Eh? So everything is communicated online, more or less. You have to write a good synopsis. You have to make a short promotion video. You have to give what we call good perks or rewards, which are things that people can get back from you when, you, when they donate to your, to your campaign. You have to update and you have to do a lot of promotion around your campaign. I'll come back to this more concretely when I run through some of the campaign's uh, case studies. And then I, have, I think you have to be very um, precise in terms of what you are asking for because there's all, sometimes a misunderstanding between what is crowdfunding and what is crowdsourcing. So crowdfunding is when you go out and specifically ask for funding for money for your project.